Welcome to the Messy Mind Podcast, a show to support you in seeing that messiness can lead to your light bulb moments. I'm your host, Tammy L. Davis. I've been wanting to do this episode for quite some time. I would say a little over a year and a half, and I would proudly like to dedicate this episode to my Black mothers, and particularly my fellow Black mothers who are small business owners. And I want to say that I see you, you matter, and you are valued. So take a listen in to some of the thoughts that swirl in my mind as a Black mother serving as a small business owner here in America. Not too long ago, at the time in which I said I wanted to do this episode, I was reading about the CEO, Whitney Wolf Hurd. Now, for those who don't know that individual or never heard, heard of her name, she is the one who is, at the time, the youngest woman to take a public company in history with her dating at Bumble. And if anyone who knows me, you know I love a good backstory. So because I was reading about this headline of Whitney Wolf Heard and how she was young, again, take her company public, I wanted to read a little bit about her. And she has a fascinating story. Well, she has an interesting story, let's just say. And it made me think about how she was able to achieve, according to societal standards, this level of success. She was a mother like me with a toddler. Now she has a toddler. Mind you, my my children are older. Nevertheless, married and juggled motherhood, wifehood, and all that goes along with it like me. However, I started to wonder what are the key differentiators between her and me? I started to think about what was her morning routine. Did she have a live-in nanny who was in her village? What are her worries and concerns? And this is where I really started to ponder some things and ask, would Whitney have to worry about the same things that I have to worry about? Will she have to worry about if her son would come home because upset because someone would automatically assume that he's done something wrong? Would she make sure that her son's location services, and she does have a son as well as I do. I have a son and a daughter. But would she have to make sure that her son's location services are turned on her phone so she can track exactly where he's going to be on a run in the neighborhood? If she had a daughter or if she has a daughter, will she have to worry about being in a school environment where she is being tolerated as opposed to being celebrated, celebrated for her achievements in the same way as her fellow white classmates are? I also begin to think about if she would have to worry about her children's thoughts when they pass a Confederate flag in the front windows of homes that they pass every single day as they walk home from the bus stop. Would she have to worry about her husband to make sure that he wears bright neon colors as a contractor so neighbors don't assume he is a burglar while working on one of his investment properties? With all that I process, and I process all those concerns and thoughts on a daily basis, I started to think about what my success would look like if I could just focus on expansion and growth and time management as opposed to the mental constraints that I face and that I process every single day when I think of my family and myself as a black woman when I leave the house. Now, Whitney's husband, Michael Hurd, I told you I like a good backstory. I do my little research. Her husband is a Texas oil heir, a restaurateur who I assume undoubtedly supported his wife emotionally and I'm going to say financially with Bumble. See, when you marry who you are destined to be with, like I did, your spouse would be your primary confidant, your partner in all aspects, your bedrock of unshakable support. 
with the support of an amazing spouse, I know for sure that you can damn near, damn near, I'm just going to say it, accomplish anything. Now, I have a deep love, a true, true infinity for entrepreneurs who build from nothing. No wealthy husband, no trust, no inheritance, just a vision, sheer grit, amazing ideas, faith in God, and the will to keep going no matter what. It is my daily prayers to God for the blood of Jesus to cover and protect us all from any danger seen or unseen. So that was the piece that I was thinking about being, you know, a mompreneur and a mother with those particular thoughts. Then shortly after, here comes the interview that Oprah had with Meghan Markle. I, too, was the one who questioned her intentions when she and Harry first started to date. Now, I'm not a follower of the royal family. Now, look, yep, I admit in third grade, I did watch the entire Princess Diana and Princess Charles wedding on TV. But I found myself paying a bit more attention when the story started to come out about Harry and Meghan. It was refreshing to me to see a couple in love, especially from a royal family, a couple with a level of freedom, ease and peace among the two of them. And then to watch their wedding displaying black excellence from their pastor to those who attended to the love that really penetrated. It really did penetrate over the airwaves. Now, as time passed, I could have never imagined the depths of the ordeal experienced by Meghan and Harry during their time together in England. Now, I can imagine, and this is where I started to think about Meghan in a different way. I can imagine what Meghan was initially thinking as a woman of color moving into a new place when you were the only one. However, the difference between me and Meghan is that I think she completely underestimated the space she was entering. For those who don't know, I moved from Washington, D.C. proper to a little small town in western Pennsylvania. And I knew not to completely underestimate moving from D.C. to a little small environment in western PA where we were the only family on five streets in our neighborhood. However, the difference between me and Megan is that she... It appeared as if she assumed what she was experiencing, most likely all of her life would translate to her new world. And I can tell you that I have had amazing angels in my life, especially from white people. Yet I've never assumed my angels would always be in any and all of my settings. I definitely, with the exception of my father and his wife and, you know, a couple of individuals, literally two individuals, well, three individuals in the corporate world in Western PA, I did have my angels. I did not and could have never assumed that they would be in all settings. I just never had that luxury. And this came up, these thoughts came up for me after watching the the, the episode, again, the Oprah interview with Meghan Markle. And halfway through the interview, I really had to stop. I had to stop watching it and just walk away. And eventually, I would probably say six months later, I did finish the episode. But the reason why I stopped is because I could no longer feel the pain that I was witnessing from Megan as she recounted her experience with the royal family. My feelings coupled with my thoughts as I read the article about Whitney Wolf Heard led me really to share these thoughts that I think about daily as a wife, as a mom, as a small business owner in America. I just wanted to share these thoughts I just wanted to express there are moments when I ask myself, what would my world look like if I could? I felt compelled to come on here after that episode to offer a disclaimer so that folks won't be coming for me in thinking that I had a level of um, hate raid 
for Whitney Heard, in which I, I do not. I applaud her. I think it's amazing for what she's been able to accomplish in relatively a short period of time. The gist of this episode was really about sharing my thoughts on what I process on a daily basis as I watch my husband leave the house and my daughter and my son and all the things that you know come up for me when I think about them and, and the current world that we live in for them. Thank you for joining us this time on the Messy Mind Podcast. Please visit our website at themessymindpod.com. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll never miss an episode. While you're at it, if you found value in this episode, we'd appreciate a rating on Apple Podcast or simply tell a friend about the show. Always remember to embrace the messiness. It can lead to your light bulb moments.